What's up, boys? Winter cut day 73. Sorry, day 74. Today, we are going to be hitting a rambunctious back day. We're going to be pulling as hard as we freaking can. Okay, we're literally going to be ripping the weights off the stack. All right, we're going to be rowing harder than anybody's ever rowed. I'm going to row harder than Ronnie Coleman today. Okay, he's going to look back and be like, man, I wish I rode harder than Max. You know what I'm saying? He, I wish I trained as hard as Max did. That's what he's going to be saying. Maybe he would have been Mr. Olympia nine times if he trained as hard as me today. So let's freaking go, boys. We got the creatine. Code MSharky996. Okay. Link in bio. Boys, I'm hype. But the fact that I don't even have a coffee in me yet is the funny part. I'm this hype. And I don't even have a coffee in me yet. So you guys know the morning routine. You're, you're, we're, we're well acquainted by now. Coffee, creatine carbohydrates, electrolytes, and not in that particular order necessarily, but that is the tendency. So the plan for today is go in, uh, hit some heavy wrist curls, really, really stupid heavy wrist curls. I'm going to probably do 85 on one arm on the dumbbell and just, because I, I love dumbbell wrist curls, man. They just feel better, feel way more natural. And I'm going to hit that for probably about seven reps, hopefully. Uh, I'm putting it first, so I don't see why it wouldn't benefit. And then after that, we're gonna hit single arm dumbbell preacher curls. I'm gonna go for like 50, maybe even, we'll see about 55, but if 50 feels light enough, we'll go 55. And uh, I'll go for like, if it's 50, six to seven reps. And that'll be good. And then also, let's think, we're doing horizontal hammer strength throws. Last time I lifted, I did five plates on that, which was really fun. Uh, five plates, one arm. And that was enjoyable, but I don't know. It just didn't feel right on my right arm for whatever reason. Like, my right arm is stronger, but the machine's slightly uneven, I feel like. Or maybe I'm just uneven. So who knows? We're going to try it again, though, either way. See if the stimulus feels adequate. Then we're going to move on to T-bar rows heavy. Probably go for four plates. Uh, try to get like eight good reps. Lat pull downs heavy. We'll see uh, which lat pull down is open. Just depends on which one is open. But last time I had to do the uh, the fixed lat pull down is a pretty good one too. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's just not the traditional one. Uh, then, uh, you know, we'll freaking... Probably just do a pump check and head out. Last time I ran into a lot of trouble trying to get a pump check. There was no room was open. So this time I'm hoping that I can find a nice, quiet, empty room and just pose in there and it'll be good. So I'm about to load, load it up this coffee. We got the peace mug today. Although what we're going to be doing in the gym will not be peaceful today. 12 ounces, strong. We're gonna mix the creatine while we make that coffee. All right. I don't know if you guys can see, but these jellos are a cheat code. They have like, I think like five or 10 calories or something. They're super, super tasty. And I just tend to be having those lately with some, uh, just any whipped cream. Any whipped cream will do. So we're gonna chuck the creatine into this mixture. We're like a mad scientist, boys. We're mixing everything. Everything all the time, we're mixing, okay? So boom, 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 boom. Close the lid, stir it. You hear that, guys? That's some stirring happening. Oh, oh, oh. Low-key feel like I did the infinite coffee glitch because it just keeps coming out. All right, so guys, if you didn't figure it out already by looking out my window, because I know you guys are creepy like that, you'll look out my window. Uh, the day is beautiful, okay? So if it's anything like this near you, I highly recommend just putting me in your headphones and just going out for a nice walk, okay? Because you need to get your steps in. You're not getting enough steps in. Um, I can tell right now you're not getting enough steps in. You're one of those... You're one of those bros who just bulks and uh, 
just goes, yeah, man, I just, I need to stay still. I, I can't move, man, because I, I, I just want to make sure I'm not burning any calories, bro. And then you're, you're still not gaining weight. You need to start slamming peanut butter and getting your steps in. That's my advice to you. And that's the key. If you, you got to be moving around when you're bulking. That was one mistake I made a little bit. I wasn't moving around that much. So, yeah, we'll just multivitamin with some coffee. One a day, just what I go with. Another cheat code on the cut, diet Sprite, you know, zero sugar, whatever. Basically the same thing. Dude, you get to have the enjoyment of a Sprite with none on the downsides. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a good deal to me. So, very, very good deal. All right. For our pre-workout carbs, boys, I don't know what we're going to do. Are we going to have cookies? I don't know. We might have, we might very well have cookies. In fact, I might have like several. Get the liquid IV in. Boys, you know why we do this. You sweat out electrolytes like crazy during a workout. You use them literally to contract your muscles. Sodium and potassium and all that, they help regulate muscular contraction. So you're, you know, it's going to help with cramps. It's going to help give your muscles the input to have power to begin with. You know, what's interesting is how, like the, oh, I put it in my coffee. Oh, dang it. Shoot. Oh. You know what? That might be good. <laughs> oh, boy. We're going to put ice cubes in and see what happens. I don't know about you, but I ain't having a fruity hot coffee. It's got to at least be fruity cold coffee. Five ice cubes total. Going from being extremely hot to extremely cold. All right, I may have discovered something. I accidentally threw a liquid IV packet into my coffee because I just wasn't thinking. So we're gonna see how it tastes. I put a crap ton of ice cubes in here. It's nice and cold. Uh, so it's basically like this pineapple iced coffee. Might be good, who knows, but in case that isn't good, we have this one to wash it down, so, you know, anyway. Oh, and not to mention the fact that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cookies. I'm going to eat them all. Yeah. All right. Three, two, one. Oh, I got to get that look off my face if I want to enjoy this. Hold on. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I'll have the pineapple. That coffee looks real good. Yeah, 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 bring it here, man. All right. All right, yeah, sorry. I just had to convince myself. Three, two, one, go. You know, that's not the worst thing ever. That's pretty good. This is reminiscent of when I've tried in the past all kind of different coffee flavors and mixed and matched random ones together and ended up with something that tasted very similar to this. So... Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not the worst thing ever. I wouldn't make it again, but it is pretty good. I don't, here's the thing. I don't see the purpose in making something like this again because I slam my coffee down anyway. I don't drink it to enjoy unless I have creamer in it. Then, yeah, I'm going to try to enjoy it, but. By the way, these cookies are frozen. Have you ever had frozen cookies? I don't think so. That's one thing you should try in your lifetime, but just know that at the end of it, you're probably going to wish you had just heated the cookies anyway in the microwave. Just saying. Three, two, one, go. We're going to chug it all.
You know, one thing I will say, I do love Liquid IV. And in fact, if they delivered me a sponsorship, I would not be uh, upset. I would be happy. But here's the thing. Their drink, if I had one request, it would be for their drink to mix a little better. Because I can't just like sip it to enjoy for the most part. I have to really, really mix it. And then like drink it really quick. Um, and I, I mean, I mix things well. You know, I don't just like give it a stir and like for two seconds, I like actually really mix it. And I'll say this, even um, the, the only time that that doesn't apply is whenever I make this thing, I, it's like the Chug Jug from Fortnite. It's like a blue and purple container. And it's about, I think it's about a half gallon. And uh, I just throw in four liquid IVs in there and I'll chuck in, you know, a ton of water up to the about 60 ounces four liquid IVs and then as many ice cubes as can fit in that bottle and it it pretty much makes the ice cubes fill like most of it after that. So that's in that case it actually does mix really well. I think the ice cubes like prevent it from sinking to the bottom or something and just increase the mixability. But and that's really good. You guys should try the chug jug. I mean, don't have it all to yourself. Uh, unless you're doing extremely intense physical activity, such as sweating or cardio for a long, long, long time. Like you're looking at, you know, people who do multiple things. Like I've seen some guys who are triathletes and they are bodybuilders and they're strong men and you know, they do all kinds of stuff. Like those are multi-sport athletes. Like those are the types of guys you need to chug jug. All right. But that's actually a famous recipe of mine. So if you, if you, if you have a friend, especially like if you go to the gym with a friend, you could have two liquid IVs, you know? So if you have a chug jug with four liquid IVs in it, 60 ounces of water packed with ice cubes, you can split that with your buddy. Say, hey, give me your bottle, buddy. Let me fill it up with my chug jug. And he'd be like, okay. And you fill his bottle up with your chug jug and it works. And he gets electrolytes and you get electrolytes and everybody's happy. And then the other guy who saw this interaction, he wants electrolytes too, but you say, hey, no. You're not having my chug jug, buddy. This is a special moment I'm sharing with my friend. Nobody can take that from us. Nobody. And then you look at him in the eye and it gets awkward. You don't break eye contact for a while. Gym management comes over. They try to break up whatever's going on between you guys. Some altercation happens. Get kicked out of the gym, banned, and you and your buddy have a cool story to tell. So, anyway. It's cookie time. And I'm going to chug this elsewhere. I will see you guys later. All right, boys. So we're in the gym right now. Uh, we're starting off with freaking wrist curls, but I just want to say, today's going to be a headphoneless workout, unfortunately, because they broke again the same way as last time. So I might try to get that fixed. But uh, this got me thinking. A lot of the old school greats, you look at, uh, you know, Jay Cutler, he wouldn't wear headphones a good amount of the time, you know. At least I think it's Jacob. I mean, a lot of the blonde bodybuilders who are huge kind of are pretty similar, so forgive me if I'm wrong on that. But uh, these guys always had intense focus, you know what I mean? They were, they like became their muscle in their training. So that's what I'm gonna try to do today. All right, so the plan here, obviously, goes super heavy. Let's see how the 85 feels. And uh, I think I'm gonna do a feeler rep first, which still is probably going to be a simulating rep uh, with you know very high levels of motor unit recruitment. But I'm gonna do it anyway, see how it feels. If it moves really easily, we'll bump off to the 90. felt really easy. Let's rest for a little bit. Go on the right side and then we'll bump up to the 90. Getting a crazy pump here. 
didn't even do anything really yet. But, you know, the heat will do that. Very, very, very hot outside compared to, uh, compared to normal. You know, these winters get pretty cold here. You know, 20 degrees and under isn't, isn't too rare to see. So when you go from that all of a sudden to 75, it's sunny. And it's a little bit confusing. <clears throat> All right, I'm thinking probably won't get that many reps. But we're gonna try to go for at least three. If I get five, I'll be super happy. But either way, I think this outcome is gonna be pretty good. So we're definitely, I mean, for sure, getting it for one, which is already an impressive feat in itself. But here we're gonna go for full range of motion. Decent tempo. I mean, honestly, I don't really pay too much attention to the tempo, but more so just where I feel it the most. Which sounds kind of bro sciencey, but I don't care. I mean, the common denominator of effective training is training that you enjoy, right? There are even like studies done on it. They say, hey, you know, training that you enjoy is probably gonna be more effective. So, you know, if I enjoy even fast reps or slow reps, it doesn't really matter. The tension's gonna probably equal out by the end of the session. So, but I will say, training like, you know, Ronnie Coleman being super explosive, training like those guys, just really explosively in general, I feel like that tends to yield really, really solid overall muscle growth comparatively to, you know, extremely slow, light, type of work so all I'm saying is going heavy has been a game changer for me I made a post about it you know back has been one of those things for me that just was always really small and then all of a sudden it blew up like probably one of my best body parts now and uh, what did that honestly was just training super explosively really heavy and not being super slow and not focusing on the stretch that much like just really just moving the weight has been super effective for me so and even then what feels like cheating to me really isn't cheating that much because I'm so used to being so controlled in my training for the longest time that uh, even a slight bit of swinging or rocking feels like a ton so kind of like my safeguard against ego lifting but anyway let's try to hit this set and see what happens Got a little wrist popping there at the end, but it wasn't that painful, so we're good. Five good reps, full depth with a 90. You know, I made a post talking about how I haven't seen anybody else who's 18 do 80s on the wrist curl with, you know, good form or really at all and uh, it wasn't like a lot of people took it like I was being prideful like oh nobody else can do this but it was more so like hey guys I'm kind of I think this is cool that I could do this and I've never seen anybody else do it you know one thing that I train and all that so and then a bunch of people commented like oh this guy's ego it's crazy but you know just making an observation I have yet to see an 18 year old wrist girl, the 80, but now, I mean, this is a 90, so. 90 for five on the weak arm, that's crazy. Let's get 95 next time, huh? Whew. All right, let's go.
I can't freaking wait to risk crawl the 125. That's gonna be insane. I mean, by that point, we're gonna be doing, you know, probably sets of like 20 when that time comes, because I mean, the weight can't go any higher. And to be honest, I kinda hate any kind of wrist curl variation that isn't dumbbell. It just none of them feel right, you know? None of them really isolate the wrist flexors better than this, in my opinion. This is the best forearm flexor exercise, for sure. Whew. All right, I'd say in about 20 seconds, I'll be ready to hit another set. You know what? That was too heavy for set number two. We're gonna lighten the load. Jeez, I hit a wall there. Holy crap. Let's go for eight to ten on the right arm. It's a little more volume than last week. Honestly, now that I think about it, there's no real need for more volume that I can think of. But sometimes you just gotta listen to your body. I kind of just wanted to do more volume. Not always necessary, but just felt like it would be cool to do two sets instead of one per arm. So, all right. I'll just say one thing super quick about those wrist curls. Very hard on the uh, forearm bones. Very hard on the forearm bones, like the, radi the radius and ulna. It tends to feel like there's a lot of pressure on those bones. So, you know, nothing insane, but it's enough for me to be more careful from now on, if that makes sense. You know, not go for the 90 on the second set in a row, which to be fair, I thought I'd be able to do, but now that I'm thinking about it, that was like a completely all out set with the 90. So I did a little more with the 75 on my right than I was able to do on my left, but still the pump is a little bit crazy. The forearms feel like they like, can't really bend all the way. So we're gonna move on to the freaking preacher curl. Let's go. Easy, come on. Easy, squeeze it, come on. Easy, yes. All right, dumbbell preacher girls, let's go. I thought it was
It's just a warm up. Let's see how it moves. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's see how many I get this for. I'm hoping for five. Let's go. Couldn't go down all the way, but it was still good. Couldn't get that last, probably 10 degrees. We get to see the fullness there up. Let's go. Seven cookie pre-workout. We had 10 cookies last night. Around 10 cookies, that didn't count, but it just felt like 10, to be honest. So, low key kind of look cool just waiting here. Somebody put this in an edit. Yes, sir. We're gonna put this back. Drop it to 45, probably. Actually, we're gonna go to the 50. I think it was the hardest preacher curl. One of the hardest preacher curls ever. Freaking hammer curls now. When do you do hammer curls? Do them single arm on a preacher. You will not regret it. Okay. If you're if you're just doing hammer curls standing up, your forearms take over a lot. But on a preacher, it gets harder as you get closer to the bottom. Instead of when you're standing, getting harder as you get to the top. And in this bottom position. Your brachialis, which is what you're trying to target during a hammer curl, is doing most of the work and taking on the brunt of the load at this bottom half, right? Right from here to here. Brachialis is doing a ton of work. So get in those bottom positions with the hammer preacher and you'll, I mean, do it safely. Okay, I'm not responsible for any potential injury, but 
That's what I recommend. I did not think I had that rep. All right. Let's chill out. Put the weight down. One more set. And then we'll go over and hit some freaking horizontal rows if the machine is open. Rest, pause. Let's go. Okay. And let's move on to the horizontal row. That's too light. <laughs> what the heck? That's too light for a warm up, even. I'm gonna start on my right because I feel like my right's weaker on this. Oops. Hey bro, you doing this on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. You I got the YouTube videos. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's cool, man. It, for that setup, I, I see that you have this piece. What does this piece do right here? So this piece is the transmitter, which means it picks up audio. So like, if I have it up to your mouth, it'll be nice and loud for you. Right. Um, and that piece that's on the camera, uh -huh. uh, that's the receiver. So okay. that basically picks up the audio coming from this. And then it, uh, it saves it with the video. Nice. Now how do you know whenever you have the image that you want to click? Uh, do you mean like just setting up the angle? And yeah, yeah. I kind of just go based off just, what? Just kind of play with it? Yeah, just play with it, yeah. I got one last question for you, I'll let you go. Yes, sir. Anybody said anything to you? Anybody come up and giving you a hard time about you know shooting? With I had other gyms, but not this gym. Not this gym, but okay. Yeah. I was just curious because I do it too, so yeah. I just haven't I haven't been doing that too much. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm getting ready to start back up. So is that is that from Best Buy? Is that like a newer one or? So I actually found the, the, the mic. Are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Just I got the tripod. I got everything except I don't have that little. Um, you know, device that you have on your ear, and it's right there. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, the, the, this is the Rode mic. It's a very high quality mic, and it's pretty good for the price. Yeah. Um, look up just Rode, Rode Wireless Mics. Okay. R O D E. Okay. And uh, I got the Rode Wireless Me, is what it's called. It was the cheapest option they have, but it's still very good. Yeah. yeah. And it works best also if you're recording just yourself. Yeah. Sweet. So, man. so Sweet. yeah. How did you do? How did you, you don't mind me asking? Did you just post a couple things on YouTube? Somebody contact you then, or did you just get like your own? Page uh, and then you just put your stuff out, and then you get some people to purchase, or, or are you looking for a bigger long-term payoff? It's yeah, it's more so like, just 
build my videos, my following, just keep uh -huh. keep being really consistent. Good. Really keep consistent, up, yeah. You look good, you got the look, man. Dude, I appreciate it. Definitely admire it, man, keep it up. You know what, I really appreciate that, thank you. That's a good dude, I like that guy. Ah. Douche, 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 douche. Whew. That was more ego driven than last week. That felt very heavy. Still, I think it was a good range of motion though. So ugh, I felt the lat like crazy. Whew. What's important here is getting the strap as tight as you can get it. Because here's the thing, man. If you get a loose strap, you have to focus almost more than if you weren't using a strap at all then it feels like the strap is slipping and it increases the grip diameter right because you're holding on to this big strap that's all bundled up and the bar and it'll make it harder but if you get the strap tight like i'm talking super tight your hands are going to look pretty messed up afterwards like little bruised maybe like in my case i get super super red wrists for like a day or two and but it's it's worth it man because it makes the sets better now don't hurt yourself be smart but I just do it as tight as I can. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying that's what I do. So, let's get this on the left. I got one more. Let's drop it down to, uh, to f I'm thinking three. I'm feeling three might be nice to just really throw around and get a good squeeze with. Loosh. We're gonna do mile reps. High rep set. That wasn't too bad. Feel that pulsating blood flow to my hand right now from that tight strap. That's how it ought to be. Doosh! 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 Woof! 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 Woof!
All right, the lap pump is insane. I'm not used to really getting any kind of lap pump, but when you do have those light squeezing sets, you really get a nice stretch and contraction, so. Now, I will say this, very clear to me, abundantly clear to me, that the pump has nothing to do with growth. It can increase inflammation and make your muscles look bigger, but in terms of packing on muscular tissue, what causes growth is stimulating reps. Stimulating reps are reps with high motor unit recruitment. High motor unit recruitment comes from high perception of effort. So, for example, I'm able to move more weight on Smith machine incline bench than I am on dumbbell incline. Because even though my perception of effort's the same, it doesn't have to divide across balancing the weight and pushing it. All I have to do is push it. So I can have full high threshold motor unit recruitment because I'm in a stable environment. My brain only has to focus all of its perception of effort onto a stable lift and the muscles producing force. So with that said, your perception of effort can still be high, even with an exercise that isn't giving the best motor unit recruitment. But what I've done is optimize my motor unit recruitment, said, okay, here's how I can get it to be the highest I possibly can, so I can reach the highest threshold muscle fibers that don't wanna change. Put it in a stable environment, do a lot of single limb stuff, take pretty high rest times, and go heavy. That is maximum avoidance of fatigue and highest stimulus. So anyway, I'm gonna wipe this thing down and we're gonna move on to some T-bar rows. All right, boys, all of the machines are taken. This is the only one that's not taken. It's a freaking miracle, praise God. Ooh, we're gonna go light today on this. Um, just because last time I went super heavy and I felt a little bit of a twinge in my low back, so to speak. It's kind of like a wave of pain for a couple minutes and then it went away. So I want to be careful. I'm going to do half a stack instead of the full stack today. The fact that I can max it out instantly tells me that uh, the strength is there, but I need to build like the tissue capacity and kind of make my body get used to spinal extension through full range of motion. So I've also heard people say the erectors have never gotten as big as when they do full range of motion spinal erector work such as good mornings. Put that in a stable environment like this and see what happens. I'm about to get huge, thick, ninja turtle spinal erectors. If you're skeptical, watch the transformation. I'm gonna have an insane back. So insane, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be Dorian Yates level. I already, now, little thing before my set, super quick. I already did a comparison picture of Dorian Yates at 21 versus my back at 18. And my back was pretty freaking similar. So we got a lot coming, you guys. I'm gonna have a huge back. Can I raise the seat? There's gotta be something I can do here. That felt weird. Ah, I can start. There you go. Alright. Much better. Because that felt like I was pushing up against nothing. Raise this thing a little bit. Perfect. All right. Loosh. Loosh. Boosh. We're doing for that today. Let's go find another machine. 
220. Let's rip this down. Thanks for letting me work in. Drops it. Oh. All right, let's hit the posing room. All right, boys. So the posing room is taken. We unfortunately do not have the greatest lighting. But it's okay. We don't need the greatest lighting to look good, boys. You know, maybe on a bodybuilding stage it'd be cool. But just for a simple pump check, you guys can see the size and shape. You don't need all that nitty-gritty lighting. That guy's powerful. All right. Hit a side chest. Bring her down, get the lats out a little bit. Show a front lat spread. All right, that's about it for me. I'm heading out. Insane pump, insane work. Heavy, hard. Let's get out of here. All right, boys. 
or on the freaking trampoline again. You guys know that this is definitely the prime candidate to be my favorite form of cardio. It's very easy to do. I could just hop in my living room. You know what I'm saying? So, whew, pretty convenient, honestly. I could take this in my room. I could go wherever. I could just jump anywhere. So, that's kind of the convenience aspect of, like, a small treadmill. So, a very similar thing, you know? Or, like, one of those foldable treadmills. I could just put it up in my closet and take it out, get on it first thing in the morning. You know? Walk on it for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Get some steps in. Come home. Walk on it for 30 minutes. You know, get a shower in. Be productive while I walk. Do things while I walk. Just get constant activity. That's the idea of the cut. And this is another outlet for activity. So any outlet that you may have, go, you know, a lot of you, your, your parents bought a treadmill a decade ago. It's been sitting there collecting dust. Get that thing out. Walk on that thing five miles a day. Walk on that thing at an incline five miles a day. Your calves might get sore, but that won't last very long, okay? Five miles a day on the treadmill every day. Because if you have a treadmill, you're a lucky, you're a lucky person. Because sometimes people can't walk outside a lot, especially where I live. It rains like crazy. So you can't always be outside and walking. Now with that said, I am very thankful for this freaking trampoline because I could just jump all the time and it probably burns similar, if not more calories than like speed walking, okay? So definitely something unique in my arsenal. But with that out of the way, let's talk about how the back day went. So I gave you guys a very brief summary at the end of my posing clip. Heavy, hard, awesome, good pop. And those things are all true. I keep having to adjust my headphone. Anyway, um, but, well, there's no but, there's just and, I guess. So, not only were those things all true, but I really, really, really thoroughly enjoyed those single arm rows. And I think one of the best things that came out of the workout was the lap hold downs. So, the form may have looked a little bit sloppy, but you guys gotta think, that's an increased range of motion from what I'm used to, going ultra wide grip. So, I moved my grip in a little bit, a couple extra inches of range of motion, maybe a little bit slightly more swinging. But the thing was, that was literally the end of my workout. I think I did one more thing after that, which was like T-bar rows. So, then I was able to move my old wide grip PR pretty easily. So, definitely gonna be sticking to mid grip for a bit. It's following a similar theme with bench press as well. But with that said, preacher curls could have gotten a little better. I did ego lift slightly. Uh, on the right arm, the form looked really good, but on the left arm, watching the video back, it looked a little bit like I was stopping short and not really getting the most ideal stretch. So I gotta take these out, these are annoying. So, you know, dude, my forearm is cramping up just holding the freaking phone. What the heck? Uh, speaking of forearms, the wrist curls were insane. I got, you guys saw, I'm in 90. Repped it out like a freaking boss. Moved down to 75. Dropped the weight. Got some good quality reps in there. Did a little more volume than last week. T-ball rows moved a little bit badly. I think that's just because I've been doing the same thing for a little too long, to be honest. I think I need to switch it up and change my grip from you know, super wide on the top handles to maybe a little bit more narrow or um, even just changing my grip entirely from the top handles to the bottom handles. So, dude, I think from those hammer curls, dude, or just the preacher curls in general, my forearms are completely fried and all those heavy rows I did, my forearms right now are just extremely, like they're burning up like crazy. So, <clears throat> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. We are going to go to the gym on Thursday, and you guys can see that video Friday. And I'm also going to just probably do some kind of 
brand new video tomorrow, which is Wednesday. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to use code Maxwell15 for PR Lifestyle by Larry Wheels. Code MSharky996 for Get Raw Nutrition. And, well, that's by C-Bomb also. And I hope you guys have a good one.